Hello, I'm Reverend Richard Bannam on behalf of the whole congregation at St Helens and St Peter's churches. Welcome to everyone who's joining us for our online Sunday service. You'll see that the River Lee has burst its banks uh, uh, following the storm we had last night, which rather gives it away that this is pre-recorded, but I think you knew that anyway. Let's greet one another. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. When Jesus was asked to sum up all of the law and the prophets, he said that the greatest commandment was to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and with all our strength. And the second command, commandment was to love our neighbour as ourselves. It's simple enough for a child to grasp and yet challenging enough for us to dedicate our lives to pursuing. We're going to have a quiet moment to reflect on how we've all been doing in loving God and our neighbour this week that's just gone. Perhaps you can think of some moments where, despite the odds, you have managed to reach out and love neighbours and family and those you find difficult, or perhaps other moments where you've dedicated time to God. But I'm sure, like me, there'll be times where you're aware that you didn't manage it, you fell short. We offer those to God, and as we do so, we sense his loving gaze and his smile upon us. We come to God with empty hands, hands open, because there's nothing that we can bring to God that he needs, because he's lacking nothing. But it's in his nature to always be ready to pour out upon us the balm of forgiveness when we say sorry. And he delights when we come to him uh, to receive love from him but to offer our love and adoration in worship. Let's pray together. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which Whoever lives is counted as dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We raise our voices heavenwards as we sing and praise God. Praise to the holiest in the heights.
A reading from Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 to 13. Jeremiah's complaint. You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say, I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear many whispering, terror on every side. Denounce him. Let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying, perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonour will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you who examine the righteous and probe the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance on them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder how familiar you are with the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I admit it's not a book that I uh, often gravitate towards, partly because Jeremiah is known as the prophet of doom. He has two messages, a message of judgment, but also of salvation. And in Jeremiah chapter 20, where we pick up the story, uh, in the first six verses before the passage we had read, uh, he is thrown into the stocks or imprisoned overnight uh, by the temple authorities for preaching uh, or for prophesying something rather unpopular. No wonder when we find him in verse 7, Jeremiah is grumpy. He's in a sort of kick a cat mood, the type of mood that uh, somebody might say, oh, just careful a moment, children. Let's go outside and play. Grandpa Jeremiah needs some alone time to calm down. Proper kick a cat grumpy. And he's not just plain old grumpy, he's grumpy with God grumpy about the situation he finds himself in but also if you see in verse 9 he's grumpy about his vocation he doesn't want to be a prophet anymore partly because of the pain that it causes him I don't know what he'd expected uh, but the result of his prophesying is mockery derision uh, and uh, unpopularity it's totally understandable that people should complain about their vocation. It often works out differently to the way we expected. I wonder how many teachers or uh, doctors or nurses uh, have quietly grumbled to God quite understandably uh, because things have not worked out recently as they had expected. I wonder how many of us have grumbled to God about our situation In those moments, it's really important to remember the call. Jeremiah wants to give up being a prophet, but he says he can't because it burns within him and he can't keep his mouth closed uh, from speaking prophetically. All Christians share in Jeremiah's prophetic ministry to some degree or other. God calls us to be angry with a righteous anger about the things that make God angry. I wonder 
if you are angry uh, about poverty or hunger or inequality or racism or modern day slavery or homelessness or abuse or neglect or greed or environmental destruction. Uh, what is it that angers God that makes you burn with anger as well? It's okay to be grumpy with God. I picture it that God is a loving parent and, and when we're angry with him, we're like a, a, a toddler having a tantrum. And you know how toddlers flail about, it's all limbs lashing out and the faces are red and running with tears and there's snot in all sorts of places. And the parent scoops them up and as the toddler rails away, the parent absorbs those blows and soaks up that anger and when the anger has exhausted itself uh, the parent uh, wraps the child in their arms and speaks tender words of love and comfort. It's okay to be grumpy with God. But Jeremiah was grumpy and his emotions were leaking out in a misdirected way towards God because God is never the source of our problems. I wonder, do your emotions sometimes leak out into your relationships with those around you in a way that's misdirected? How might that happen in your life? Uh, my family were kind enough the other day, only uh, earlier this week, uh, to point out to me that when I'm uh, stressed or anxious or, or, or really feeling the pressure, uh, I'm less fun to be around. Uh, I'm less patient and forgiving as a father. I'm less tender and loving as a husband. And in all likelihood, I'm less good at, at my role as a priest as well. Jeremiah is grumpy towards God but God is not the cause of his problems. In verse 10, uh, we get to the real issue. Everybody around him is against him. Even his friends seem to have turned against him. And when he identifies the real issue and redirects his emotions towards the true issue, he gets a breakthrough, as we will do too, when we correctly identify the source of our problems. He begins to regain perspective. And in verse 11, he declares, uh, but the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. God is always for us, always there for us and always on our side, always wanting the best for us. I said that there were twin messages of judgment on the one hand in the book of Jeremiah but also the message of salvation. The whole book of Jeremiah points forward to the fact that uh, the nation of Israel uh, will be carried off into exile in Babylon, but that after their punishment has been paid, they will return to the land that God has promised them. This foreshadows the work that Jesus has done for us on the cross and by his resurrection. Each of us is deserving of God's judgment for the things we've done wrong in our lives and the times we've cared about things that God doesn't care about and the times we've failed to care about the things that God does care about. And yet on the cross, Christ took that judgment for us. And by his resurrection, he shows us the way to everlasting life. When we get to verse 13, Jeremiah is no longer grumpy. Hallelujah! His mood has been transformed when he realises how good God is and how God is always for him. And he says, sing to the Lord, give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hand of the wicked. Jeremiah realises that he is rescued and redeemed and transformed by the love of God for him. And that's true for us today. In conclusion, 
if you remember nothing else. Can we do this together? Can we try it that uh, when you're grumpy and when I'm grumpy, we will remember that God is not the source of the problem. God is good and is always for us. And if we turn to him, if we're honest to God about our problems, he will redeem them and can transform the darkest situations. So of course, let's try not to be grumpy, but let's try to give to God our grumpiness, the real source of the issue, and allow his spirit to work in our hearts and our lives and to transform us. I'll give it a go if you will. God bless you. Amen. Dear Lord, please help our grandparents who we really miss and can't wait to see you again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, please help those who don't have much and are struggling in lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Dear God, please help those who are still fighting the pandemic. Help them to know that our thoughts and prayers are with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Gospel reading which was set for today highlights how faith can be a cause of division in families. And yet Christ came to reconcile us to God and to one another. In John chapter 15, Jesus gives us a new commandment. He says, love one another as I have loved you, so you are to love one another. We're going to greet one another uh, with a sign of God's peace. And if you're fortunate enough to be in lockdown with other people, or maybe even watching this alongside somebody else, why not give them a hug or a handshake or a kiss? greet them appropriately. Even if there's somebody else in the house and you're not watching it together, why not press pause in a moment and go and greet them? But of course, lots of you will be watching this uh, in isolation on your own. In that case, why don't you pray for peace in the lives of those whom you love, but also peace in the lives of those with whom you struggle. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's greet one another. As we come towards the end of our worship together, uh, before our final prayers, uh, which I have to say are my favourite part of the liturgy, and I'll explain why in a moment. Before then, I want to say a thank you for joining us. Uh, if you want to find out more about the life of our church together at St Helens and St Peter's, uh, then do look on our website. It's uh, sth-stp.org. Uh, or email me at revrichb at gmail.com. Uh, we'd love to connect with you uh, in whatever way suits you. Um, on our website, you can sign up to join our mailing list and we'll send information a couple of times a week. Uh, alternatively, connect with us uh, via Zoom. Uh, we meet uh, on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock and Wednesday mornings at 10.30. 
We really want uh, everyone to feel a part of our church family and community uh, and we look forward to welcoming you in a more personal way. I said that this uh, last prayer is one of my favourite parts of the liturgy and not just because it signals we're nearly at the end of our service uh, but because it sends us out to live and work our lives in service of God. It's our Christian faith being taken out to our schools and our places of work Monday to Friday. It's uh, our Christian service and love uh, taken into all of our relationships and our leisure activities 24-7. So let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for meeting us in our worship and nourishing us by your word. We offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. At the beginning of our service, I said that we came with empty hands, but God is generous and he loves to pour good gifts out into our lives. So we might like to repeat that gesture, holding out our hands in anticipation of God's bountiful provision as we prepare to receive his blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us and all whom we love and care for, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. Have a good week. Take care and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.